Hello everyone, my name is Mini Sethi. I hope you all are staying healthy. Today we are going to talk about Marshallian and Walrasian equilibrium or we can say the partial and general equilibrium. First of all, we are going to talk about partial equilibrium. Partial equilibrium is given by Alfred Marshall. That's why it also known as a Marshallian equilibrium. What do you mean by partial equilibrium? Partial equilibrium describe equilibrium only in one market and assuming all others markets are constant. Partial equilibrium describe equilibrium only in one market and assuming all other markets are constant. Or we can say that partial equilibrium study about individual behavior or study about market in isolation. And partial equilibrium study at small level at individual level. That's why it will be called method of studying microeconomics. Now with the help of some examples, we will clearly understand what is partial equilibrium. As we know, partial equilibrium describe equilibrium only in one market and assuming all other markets are constant. For example, partial equilibrium describe equilibrium price of a Samsung mobile based on demand and supply of Samsung only and assume Apple, LG, Nokia markets are constant means assume Apple companies demand and supply are constant. But in reality, this is not true. In reality, Samsung prices, supply and demand are affected by Apple, LG and Nokia. Suppose supply of Apple mobile increase. As supply of Apple mobile increase, their prices fall. As prices of Apple mobile fall, now customers are shifting from Samsung to Apple. So here we see how Samsung is affected by Apple. But in partial equilibrium, we assume, means we describe about equilibrium only in one market and assuming all other markets are constant. But in reality, this is not true. All markets are affected by each other. Second thing about partial equilibrium is that all other factors are constant. For example, in case of low demand, we assume demand is only affected by price and assume all other factors are constant. But in reality, this is not true. Demand is not only affected by price, demand is affected by so many factors. For example, taste and preferences of customer, income of customer, their substitution product, etc. Uh, next thing about partial equilibrium is that partial equilibrium ignore interdependence. According to partial equilibrium, variables are not depend on each other. But this is not true. In ISLM curve, we study about how product market and money market are depend on each other. Now we are going to talk about Marshallian adjustment or we can say the adjustment according to partial equilibrium. Case 1, whenever demand curve is downward and supply curve is upward. So what do you mean by Marshallian adjustment? Marshallian adjustment basically is quantity adjustment. Quantity adjustment means looking at the prices, we try to make adjustment with quantities so that we can reach at equilibrium price. Please listen carefully. Quantity adjustment means looking at the prices, we try to make adjustment with quantities so that we can reach at equilibrium price. With the help of this diagram, we will clearly understand this concept. In this diagram on x-axis, we have quantities and y-axis, we have prices. DD is demand curve and SS is supply curve. E is our equilibrium price, uh, sorry, E is our equilibrium point and our equilibrium price is OP. Now suppose demand price increase more than supply price. Increase in demand price means people are willing to pay more price for our product than we are actually charging. Here you can see HQ is demand price. This H line touches our demand curve. So HQ is our demand price and GQ is our supply price. This G point touches our supply curve. Here you can see demand price is more than supply price. Means consumer are willing to pay more for our product than we are actually charging. This is good opportunity for producer. Na. That's why producer will increase supply. As producer will increase supply, price will fall and we ultimately reach at this equilibrium price. On the other hand, if supply price is more than demand price, that means people are willing to pay less prices for our product than we are actually charging. Here you can see supply price is PQ2 and demand price is KQ2. Here you can see supply prices is more than demand prices. 
if people are willing to pay less for our product then we are actually charging this is not good situation for us na that's why we will reduce supply if we reduce supply ultimately prices will increase and ultimately we reach at this equilibrium price so here we see looking at the price we are making adjustment with quantities so that we can reach at this equilibrium price so this will this will be called marshallian quantity adjustment and this equilibrium will be called a stable equilibrium because we ultimately reach at this equilibrium point now we will take second case of marshallian adjustment here we have upward sloping demand curve and downward sloping supply curve sometime we have upward sloping demand curve for example in case of given goods in case of luxury goods etc and sometime we have downward sloping supply curve for example sometime we don't increase production don't increase supply because we have a fear after some time period our product can become out of fashion so e is our initial equilibrium point and op is our initial equilibrium price now suppose the supply price is more than demand price here you can see h q1 is supply price this h point touches our supply curve tq1 is our demand price this t point touches our demand curve here you can see supply prices is more than demand prices if supply prices is more than demand prices that means you will reduce supply as a result the prices will increase when you reduce supply that means supply curve will shift backward somewhere here if you if prices will increase that means you will go somewhere above but not at this equilibrium point e similar if demand prices is more than uh, supply prices here you can see k, k q2 is demand prices and m q2 is supply prices when demand prices is more than supply prices that means you will increase supply as a result of prices will fall if you will increase supply that means supply curve will shift forward somewhere here and if you reduce price that means you will go somewhere below but not at this equilibrium point when you are not able to achieve at initial equilibrium point it will be called unstable equilibrium so we can say that according to marshall adjustment we have unstable equilibrium point when our demand curve is upward sloping and supply curve is downward sloping now we are going to talk about wold raisin equilibrium or we can say general equilibrium it is given by leon walrus and general equilibrium study about different markets simultaneously general equilibrium study about different markets simultaneously not in isolation like marshall for example general equilibrium study about demand and supply of samsung nokia apple lg simultaneously and come to conclusion as a aggregate demand of a whole market and aggregate supply of whole market second thing about general equilibrium is don't assume any factor is constant for example general equilibrium study about a whole factor that affect aggregate demand like consumption investment government spending etc next thing is that general equilibrium assume all variable are depend on each other for example it assume product market and money market are depend on each other now we are going to talk about wall raising adjustment first case is upward sloping supply curve and downward sloping demand curve wall raising adjustment is price adjustment what do you mean by price adjustment that means looking at quantities of product we try to make adjustment with price so that we can achieve our equilibrium quantities please listen carefully price adjustment means looking at quantities of product we try to make adjustment with price so that we can achieve our equilibrium quantities in this diagram you can see dd is demand curve ss is supply curve e is initial equilibrium point and our initial equilibrium quantity is o q now suppose quantities of supply is more than quantities of demand means supply is more than demand here you can see demand is this one but supply is this one if supply is more than demand that means seller will reduce price seller will reduce price until we achieve at this equilibrium point e here you can see we have achieved our equilibrium quantities o q similar if quantities of demand is more than quantities of supply means demand is more than supply then seller will increase price until we achieve at this equilibrium point e here you can see again we will achieve our equilibrium quantity o q 
so here we see looking at quantities of product we try to make adjustment with price so that we can achieve our equilibrium quantity o q and this will be called stable equilibrium under wall resin adjustment now we will take second case of wall resin adjustment where we have a downward sloping supply curve and upward sloping demand curve is our initial equilibrium point and our initial equilibrium quantities is o q now suppose uh, quantities of demand is more than uh, quantities of supply here you can see quantities of supply is only this one this h point touches our supply curve and quantities of demand is this one this r point touches our demand curve if uh, demand is uh, more than supply that means supplier will increase price if supplier will increase price that means we will reach somewhere here if reach price but not at this equilibrium point if we are not able to achieve at this equilibrium point then how we can achieve our equilibrium quantities oq similar if quantities of supply is more than quantities of demand means supply is more than demand you can see uh, demand is this one supply is this one in this case uh, supplier or we can say seller will reduce price if seller will reduce price uh, we will go somewhere below here somewhere but not at this equilibrium point e if we are not able to achieve at this equilibrium point then how we can achieve our equilibrium quantities oq so we can say that in this case we are not able to achieve our equilibrium point means we are not able to come back our initial equilibrium point that's why it will be called unstable equilibrium point so this is all about volresian and marshallian equilibrium i think you got it and thank you so much for watching this video bye take care